Hi everyone, Jess here, and today I'm joined with travel industry analyst Henry Hartsfeld, who's going to be moderating a range of sessions at Aviation Festival Asia later this month. Thank you for joining me today, Henry. Hi Jess, thanks for inviting me. Of course, it's a pleasure to, to have you again. So Henry, you're going to be facilitating discussions with a whole host of key industry players, Air Asia, Diversion Australia, Cathay Pacific, and many more. So today, I was hoping you could give us a preview into what to expect from these sessions. Hey, look, I think that these are going to be some really exciting, very compelling sessions. And, and uh, I, I think all the panelists are eager to share their perspectives. And I think what's great is we have some contrasting points of view on some of the panels which I think leads to a really interesting conversation. Not everybody in that in a room has the same view, believes in the same thing, feels that a technology or strategy will offer the same benefit. The conversations that I'll be hosting will reflect that diversity of opinion. Fantastic, and that's always great to, to hear some points of contention and not just everyone in agreement because sometimes those really are the most fruitful discussions, especially to watch as an audience member. Right. And I think one of the things that's been interesting is the divergent views on artificial intelligence. Uh, uh, obviously, artificial intelligence includes multiple components, machine learning, natural language processing, large language models and more. But there are some airlines that feel that AI is really not as useful to the organization as others do. And there are some airlines who are all in with AI. They, they have it running in pricing, in flight ops, in network planning, in marketing, and more. So I think it's gonna be really interesting to see, you know, not so much who is right and wrong, because all opinions are equally valid, but where is the struggle? What, what are the challenges that airlines face uh, whether they are choosing to implement AI, expand their use of AI, or whether they want to remain on the sidelines for the time being. Fantastic. And um, and obviously your sessions are touching on quite a range of themes. So you've got Keynote, digital and IT, revenue management. Can you give us some insight or any teasers into what to expect from these? I know you've just mentioned some points of disagreement. Are there any others you'd like to share? Yeah, I mean, it's refreshing to hear that there's a lot of customer centricity taking place, perhaps not surprising because, because Asia is home to some of the world's finest airlines uh, and the air, whether they are an ultra low cost carrier or a long haul network airline, there is a real strong focus on understanding the customer and finding the products and services that meet that customer's needs and make them happy. So that's really interesting. The uh, focus on data, uh, what to collect, how to make it actionable, the challenges airlines have with this uh, is another area that is really interesting. And the different views on how airlines are approaching revenue management, uh, uh, and frankly, the blurring of roles and lines within the organization uh, is something that is really, really interesting. You don't hear CIOs just speaking about tech. You hear them talking about the business. You don't hear pricing people just talk about revenue management, inventory management, and so on. You hear them talking about working with colleagues in marketing and sales and ops and other functions. Marketing and commercial leaders are, are talking about how they are working more with their colleagues in different departments as well. So I think that there's gonna be a lot of focus on the changing organization, the changing roles that we have, despite what our business cards may say, and the importance of uh, evolving your culture to keep your employees happy, keep them on the job, uh, but also to, for these airlines to make themselves employers of choice. That's a, that's a really interesting point you just made. And when you when you talk about this sort of blurring of the lines and the sort of more gray areas in between jobs, um, do you think this speaks to a wider trend of working as an ecosystem as opposed to these sort of very segregated units? Absolutely. Look, I've said for a long time, silos are only good for storing grain. If you have organizations where the the uh, departments are calcified, where there is little cooperation and collaboration as an airline, you won't be as successful as you can be. The airlines that are successful, 
not only think about roles and reporting structures, but literally where are roles put within an office location, which departments are adjacent to others, so that it's easy for people to get up from their desks and talk to one another uh, and have the conversations that need to be held to discuss ideas, challenges, strategies, and more, and to execute more effectively. Absolutely, that's so well put. And if we take a step back just from the event uh, for a moment, can you point to some of the exciting innovations or trends that we've seen recently? Well, I think what's really interesting is airlines are doing a lot of different things. Some are going all into dynamic pricing, continuous pricing, bundling, offers and orders. Uh, others are, uh, again, using elements of artificial intelligence to improve efficiency, improve relevancy. Um, some are uh, looking much more at mobile and becoming far more mobile centric. Uh, uh, so again, there's no one trend or one innovation that stands out. What impresses me is that airlines are taking action. And I, you know, I know I've been speaking about airlines. I should say airports are as well. I'm going to be interviewing the CEO of Cambodia Airports. They've been innovating. They used the COVID downtime to lengthen a runway at one of their airports. They're the first in their country to have wastewater management uh, treatment uh, facilities. Uh, uh, and they're pioneering being a more sustainable organization and the importance of sustainability in that country. So again, it's not just airlines who are uh, uh, being innovative. We're, there are airports that are doing so as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And it would be interesting to see how these sort of wider themes influence the conversation at the event. But aside from your own sessions, uh, is there any content that you're particularly looking forward to being in the audience for? Yes, well, I'm certainly looking forward to hearing Danny Lee's interviews with the CEOs. Uh, he's he's a great reporter and a very good interviewer. So I'm looking forward to those discussions. There are some sessions I hope to be able to attend on some other tracks, uh, including distribution uh, and retail uh, uh, and uh, also uh, loyalty. So there are a number of different sessions that are taking place. Uh, the, the challenge to being the moderator is you don't get to go to all the sessions and and the challenge of, of not being able to clone myself is I can only be in one place at one time. There's a lot of compelling content out there uh, uh, at the event. Um, it, you know, I look at this and I'm thinking, airline management offices in, in Asia really should be emptied during the two days of the conference because there is something for almost everybody in airline management and operations uh, at Aviation Festival Asia. Exactly. And um, and we're really excited to have you joining us back at the event this year. And I really look forward to seeing what your sessions have in store. Well, thanks. Well, last year's event was really fun. It was really engaging. Uh, and, and there were a lot of fresh perspectives. I hope we're going to see that not only in my sessions, but other sessions as well. And I'm certainly looking forward to being a part of Aviation Festival Asia 2024.